How do flowers survive in the desert? Reproductive flexibility. The deserts are often characterized by high summer temperatures and low and unpredictable precipitation. Despite such extreme environmental conditions, the arid and semi-arid areas are often characterized by remarkable plant diversity, suggesting unique adaptive strategies of arid-resistant plants. The most renowned adaptations of desert plants include large stems with thick and waxy skins to conserve and store water, succulent leaves to store water, small leaf surfaces to reduce water loss from stomata, spines to protect plants from being eaten by animals, and widespread roots near the surface to absorb rainwater quickly before it evaporates. While the specialization of roots, stems, and leaves has been largely studied in arid resistant plants, little is known about floral adaptation to aridity. The climatic unpredictability of desert environments, as well as the unreliability of pollinator services, puts severe limitations on plants' reproductive ability. The assurance of reproductive success is therefore an important challenge for arid-resistant plants. Self-pollination provides a mechanism of reproductive assurance which can compensate for the inadequate breeding opportunities in extreme environments, given that it is not limited by the availability of pollinators or mates. However, this advantage comes along with significant reproductive costs of self-fertilization and inbreeding depression. Inbred offsprings are less fit than outbred offspring, making outcrossing a more favorable reproductive strategy. We hypothesized that desert plants are capable of both selfing and outcrossing, thereby they can balance their need for the reproductive assurance with their fitness preferences by shifting between selfing and outcrossing. The members of the plant family Zygophilaceae are characteristic elements of arid vegetation distributed in various environments ranging from extremely arid to less arid or semi-arid areas. We studied the mating system in Zygophilaceae species from different ranges of arid habitats to indicate the incident of selfing and outcrossing and the association between the mating system and the aridity level of related habitats. We evaluated the reproductive system based on four criteria. Pollen ovule ratio, which is often higher in outcrossing species due to their need to compensate high pollen vestige by pollinators. Seed and fruit set in selfing and outcrossing experiments, which can reflect the degree of selfing and outcrossing. Pollinator availability, which suggests more outcrossing opportunities and floral morphology, which is often showy and attractive in outcrossing species. In Oge, the very low pollen ovule ratio, high selfing seed set while lacking outcrossing seed set, the lack of pollinators, and often closed flowers with invisible petals suggest an obligate selfing system. In most tetraena species, the medium pollen ovule ratio, the higher seed set of selfing compared to outcrossing, infrequent pollinators, and non showy flowers suggest a facultative selfing system that is predominantly selfing and less outcrossing. In Roipera and Zygophilum species, the high pollen ovule ratio, the lower seed set of selfing compared to outcrossing, the frequent pollinators and showy flowers suggest a facultative outcrossing system that is predominantly outcrossing and less selfing. Summarizing, different degrees of selfing are found in this family. So, is the degree of selfing associated with the degree of aridity? Looking through the distribution map of studied species in South Africa indicates that 
the obligate selfing species auger is restricted to the most extreme arid areas, while the facultative selfing species tetraena are often distributed towards less arid areas, and the facultative outcrossing species are often distributed in semi arid areas. The degree of selfing, therefore, decreases by reducing the degree of aridity. The plasticity of the breeding system, therefore, provides an important strategy to deal with the environmental heterogeneity and varying pollinator availability of arid environments. The coexistence of both selfing and outcrossing opportunities in mixed mating species raises a question on how the degree of selfing and outcrossing is controlled in these species. The self-compatible plants are often protected from the harmful effects of selfing by developing anti-selfing mechanisms. These include dichogamy or temporal separation of female and male functions within a flower, and hercogamy or the special separation of male and female function within a flower which can arise either through the unequal growth of sexual organs or the active movement of the sexual organs. Our study of the reproductive system in desert species Zygophilium fabago indicated that these species use specialized mechanisms to enhance its fitness while providing opportunities for reproductive assurance. The antithesis starts with the female phase, during which only outcrossing is possible. However, the female function remains active during the consequent male phase. The separation of male and female phase is therefore not complete, referring to as partial dichogamy. The overlap between the female and male phases provides opportunities for delayed selfing, which can assure reproductive success in case of lacking pollinators or extreme weather. But dichogamy is not the only mechanism balancing the shift between selfing and outcrossing in Zygophilum fabago. We found two floral morphs with distinct stigma positions. The central morph, C morph, in which the stigma is located close to the anthers, and the lateral morph, L morph, in which the stigma is especially separated from the anthers by the downward bending of the style. The stigma stamen distance was significantly larger in the L morph than in the C morph. We found that the degree of selfing was significantly larger in C morph than in L morph, while the degree of outcrossing was more or less equal. The proximity of sexual organs and partial dichogamy in the C morph allows for the delayed selfing and assurance of reproductive success, while the separation of sexual organs through hercogamy in the L morph prevents late selfing and encourages a higher rate of outcrossing, promoting genetic diversity. Given the potential of hercogamy to evolve rapidly in response to changing environmental conditions and availability of pollinators, we hypothesize that the proportion of L morph is under natural selection and regulated according to the environmental conditions and outcrossing possibilities. In rainy years with higher availability of pollinators, an increase in the proportion of Elmore flowers can promote the rate of outcrossing, whereas in dry years and under scarcity of pollinator service, a decrease in the proportion of Elmore flowers can mediate a higher degree of late selfing. Such flexibility in the mating system against environmental changes is especially important in desert environments with fluctuating weather conditions and the unpredictability of pollinator service. The flexibility of the mating system in terms of balancing the degree of selfing therefore provides an important advantage in responding to the unpredictable conditions of the desert environment.